So life is not the physical body, it is an energy. How this life was originated? Very controversial and very difficult subject to understand. Some people say this life was created by God. That's all. Some others say it is not God. There is a universal consciousness. So the life is the unit derived from this universal consciousness. Exist for a certain period, again absorb into the same universal consciousness. This is another interpretation. Some others say life come into existence accidentally, not created by anybody, not planned or conditioned or promoted by anybody. It is coincident. When element, cosmic energies combine together, the mind comes into existence. After that, we regard this as life. Uh, this is the interpretation given by certain scientists, free thinkers, rationalists without depending on any religion or God. Uh, that is why I told you this is a very complicated subject. Let us take Adam and Eve created by God. The similar illustration you can find in the Buddha's teaching also. In Agnanya Sutra. God created Adam and Eve. After that, He created provident food. Advised them not to eat. Then snake appeared from hell, influenced them to eat forbidden fruits. They become sinners because they ate the fruits. Recently, one speaker, when he was giving a talk, on this subject. He said, if Adam and Eve were Chinese, first they eat the snake. <laughs> so, <laughs> settle the problem. <laughs> These are illustrations, my dear friends. Then what is the Buddhist point of view? Buddhism says the world exists, decay, disappear, reappear, four stages. Now this is the time that world exists. We are also existing because of that. 
slowly going on decaying, 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 decaying. That is natural. Later, all these planet, sun, moon, galaxies, universe disappear, but not at once. When one section disappears, the other section remains. Galaxies. In certain planets there are different kinds of living beings. Always exist. They appear and disappear. So when this world system reappeared after destruction, certain other living beings in other planets we regard them as Devas or Brahmas or God, whatever name that we give, it is immense material. Having seen this earth, two of them come down for curiosity sake to see what it is. When they came down, they had very tempting error. They could not tolerate it. The cream of the earth. So they wanted to eat and to taste. Then they found out it is very tasty, better than durian ice cream. After eating this, what happened? They are hidden craving perhaps. Then they lost their miraculous power to go back. So they had no other choice, they had to settle. Then after this craving, various other defilement, mental impurities also started to develop. At the beginning, these two persons had no sex, sex formation, neither male nor female, free from them. When Craving and various other mental defilements developed, divided, separated, male and female. Then started to create, produce. This is the Buddhist illustration. There is one important point here. Those who believe that God created and He created provident food, advise them not to eat. The devil influence for them to create temptation. After eating, they become sinners. Buddhism says, after eating that cream from this earth, around their hidden craving, they have lost their miraculous power. Same origin. Illustrated in different ways. That means, craving is the main cause. Every existing religion accepts this. Uh, that is the way how 
the life is originated. Then what is the meaning of this word? Human, man, of course people don't like this word man. Today, they use human or humanity or humankind. No mankind because ladies don't like it. <laughs> Why are you man? So, anyway, let us use the word man in old English. For the whole mankind, they use the word man. What is the meaning of this word? It's very important. According to Chinese philosophy, the definition is given in this way. Man or human means one who concerned for others. That living being is called human. Humane quality. Take for instance, when you meet one of your friends or relatives during the lunch time or in the evening, the way of greeting is very meaningful. In Malaysia, they say Sudamaka. Now that is the way of greeting. It is not the how do you do. That is not very meaningful to us. Have you taken your food? <laughs> that means we concern about your way of life. In India, how do people greet others? Aapki how is your health? Now that is the way of reading. Now this Chinese definition of human is meaningful. Human beings always concern others. They are not selfish living beings by nature. Then, the Western philosophy, especially in Greek, like Socrates, Aristotle, they say human means one who can use sense of reason. Yes, they are right. Human beings are not like animals. They use only instinctive power. They have no sense of reasoning. But we have. That means our knowledge, our understanding, our wisdom. We analyze things to find out whether they are useful or good or bad. Only human beings can do that. Sense of reason. Then what is the interpretation given in Buddhism? I think it is more meaningful gone beyond their language. We are called Manushya in Pali and Sanskrit and Hindi and Malay and all those languages. Same word Manushya. Manasa Ussanata. One who can raise, one who can develop, cultivate 
the mind up to the maximum level. That living being is called Manushya. That is why only a human being can become a Buddha. A Deva or Brahma or God, any other supernatural living beings cannot become a Buddha. Because that development of intellect is not there. Only human mind can do that. That is why in Mahayana schools of Buddhism, they say, in every living being, in fact they say, in every plant, there is Buddha nature, Buddha seed. That means, potentials are there. Every living being can become a Buddha one day if they cultivate all their good qualities and virtues and knowledge and wisdom and beauty. Therefore, we cannot say that so and so cannot become a Buddha. All of us can, one day, if we need to become the Buddha. This is the real meaning of this word, human or manush. All the existing religions advise people to develop relationship towards God. Chinese philosophy says we must develop our relationship towards the human being. Then we can cultivate all the good qualities and virtues. We can gain many things from other human beings. When we developed our relationship, goodwill, understanding, cooperation, unity, harmony, Sympathy, and they are called humane qualities. These things we cannot get from heaven. We have to cultivate. Then radiate towards other living beings. The meaning of our life we can find there. The meaning of life we cannot gain simply by worshipping and praying and offerings or reciting anything. But by cultivating these qualities, virtues, knowledge, wisdom. <laughs> there is a belief that human life is in the center between heaven and hell. Other living beings are not in the center, only human beings. Why do they say? Because human beings 
can cultivate their life better than all the other living beings, then they can experience heavenly bliss easily. At the same time, when human mind become cruel, wicked, selfish, crooked, can abuse, misuse, after that humans can behave worse than animals because of that crookedness and cunningness. Uh, then easily can experience hellfire. That is why they say so human life is in between or the center between heaven and hell. What is the real meaning of this these two words, heaven and hell? Heaven means most pleasurable, pleasant, meaningful, useful life. Hell means most unfortunate, miserable life. And this is the Buddhist concept of heaven and hell. In one of his discourses, Buddha has said, only foolish people believe that hell is located under this earth or great ocean If you don't believe what the Buddha said, if you still believe that hell must be under this earth, today the modern equipments are very strong. You can go on drilling and drilling and drilling. You will be landed in America, not in heaven. <laughs> A man who was very rich approached the Buddha and said, he has no time to meditate or to observe a precept to practice religion, but even then he says, after his death he would like to go to heaven and enjoy his life. <laughs> and asked the Buddha to tell him what to do. Then the Buddha said, Why do you want to wait until you die to experience heavenly bliss? You can experience heavenly bliss while you are living here within this lifetime. This is the Buddhist concept of heaven and hell. So one day, we had a religious forum at the University of Malaya. There were four speakers on four religions. The subject was religious concept of heaven and hell. In my talk, I mentioned, supposing if heaven and hell were closed up, <laughs> What are you going to preach in the name of your religion? As Buddhists, we can preach Buddhism without depending on heaven or hell. This is the way how the Buddha has introduced religious way of life. Because we create heaven and hell according to our way of life. 
There's nobody else to create heaven and hell. We create. We cannot see. There are no heavens or hell. Not only one, there are many. But we create. If we know how to handle, how to make use of this life, we know how to create heaven. If we abuse, misuse this valuable human life, we create heaven. In fact, without religion, we do not know what to do with this life. But religion tells how to make use of this life without abusing and misusing. Then what is the purpose? What is the meaning? People believe that enjoyment, indulgence, pleasure give happiness. Can find out the purpose or the meaning of our life. Entirely wrong. Pleasure, enjoyment, indulgence can create more sufferings, more frustration, more disappointment, unsatisfactoriness in our life. So we should not become slaves to pleasure. Because of that mental attitude, we experience more unsatisfactoriness. The best advice given by the Buddha is this. You must develop contentment. Santuti Paramam Dhan. The highest wealth is contentment. Rich man is not a wealthy man. One who has to develop contentment is a wealthy man. Rich men suffer day and night. Fear, worries, suspicion, insecurity, enemies, disturbances. Is that the way to enjoy life? Always in fear. But the contented man is free from all these disturbances. No enemies, no jealousy, no enmity, no anger. Free, no violence, such a small mental entity. Containment. What is this containment? This is enough for me. This is content. But people cannot do that. People want to work hard like day and night like slaves. Accumulate, accumulate, go on dumping and dumping and collecting. For what? To enjoy life. But before that they kick the bucket. <laughs> Nobody to enjoy. Then, worries, blood pressure, gastric ulcer, disturbances, unhappiness, 
but one who has developed contentment will be free from all these disturbances. The meaning of life we can give by cultivating these good qualities. Don't think that we can find meaning of life by enjoying. Amongst all these living beings, do you know, human beings are the weakest living beings in this world? Do you know that? You think we are very strong? Can you fight with a rat without using any weapon? Can you fight? You run away. <laughs> you are scared of that tiny creature. You think you are very, you are very weak. <laughs> Why are you scared? Because you have no weapons with you. All the other living beings have weapons. By the teeth of gold, if not poison, we are good. That is why we are scared. Tiniest creatures and bees, they have weapons. Okay. One day I have seen a frog enter into the veranda of our temple. A dog wanted to go and catch this frog. As soon as the dog smelled then the frog went on bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> then the dog put a squeeze some poisonous juice from the body. After that, that dog never went to a frog. What have you done? <coughs> Nothing. That is why I told you we are the weakest living beings in this world. Do you know the reason why? Is there anybody here who can tell me why we are weak physically or biologically? Please. We were born to this world as human beings without any weapons, not to harm other living beings. That is for the development. That is why we say we are cultured living beings, not a wild animal. We are cultured. We were born not to harm others. That is why we have got anything. Then we can radiate our kindness, compassion, unity, harmony, understanding towards other living beings. These are the inbuilt qualities of virtues. Then you can see the meaning of life. But unfortunately, due to our craving, we have developed weapons, destructive gadgets. Today, President of America 
push one button here. The whole world turned into ashes within half an hour. If I am wrong, please go and ask the President of America. <laughs> this is called human. This is the danger of intelligence that they misused and abused for destructive purposes. That is why religion is important. Do you know, amongst all these living beings in this universe, only human beings have a religion. Others have no religion. Who discovered religion? It is not that religion came down from heaven or religion is given by anybody. That is the development of the human intelligence and understanding. Animals, of course you can understand. What about Devas and Brahmas? We worship them. But you do not know that they have no religion. There is no particular religion for Devas and Brahmas. When they were human beings during their previous birth, what they have cultivated and developed are still they use. But as Devas and Brahmas, they do not perform any religious activities. They do not cultivate their mind according to religious belief. One day, Sakra, I think all of you know Sakra, came up and God. He was worshipping. Then his assistant asked, you are the ruler of this particular heaven. To whom are you worshipping? Then he said, ye gahattha punyakar silavanta upasata dhammena dharam posam you do not know that. You worship the Sakra, but Sakra worship you. If you behave as real human beings, if you lead the noble, righteous way of life, if you observe your religious principles, if you fulfill all your duties and responsibilities, your family obligations, if you lead harmless and respectable life, if you support your family in a righteous way, Sakra say, I respect you. Sakra worship you when you are respectable, when you lead a noble life, and this is the value of human life. They was also respected. Why Devas and Brahmas always come and pay respect to the Buddha? Whenever they had many problems and troubles, they discussed. They pay homage to the Buddha. Such a valuable human life, due to our ignorance, misconception, imaginations, we misuse, utter wastage. 
to develop our life up to this level as human beings. We do not know enormous troubles and pains that we have taken to cultivate our life up to this level. It is just like climbing the top of the Mount Everest. But to climb this Mount Everest, we can understand the trouble and the pain at the risk of our life. But to come down from this Mount Everest is not very difficult, very easy. <laughs> this is one step wrongly, you will be at the bottom. <laughs> very easy. If you misuse this valuable human life, all your efforts will be wasted. Again we have to start climbing, climbing. That is why when a Deva in Devaloka or heaven is going to die and some other Devas say, Itto ko sugati after your death, you must go to heaven. Sugati. Who says Devas in heaven? The idea is become a human being. As human beings, we can use sense of reason to understand. But Devas, Brahmas, animals, the spirit, ghosts, devils, most living beings have no sense of reason. When we suffer, we can understand. We might have done something during our previous birth or early part of our life. That is why we suffer while others are enjoying. When we enjoy our life, while others are suffering, we can understand we have done some meritorious deeds either during our previous birth or early part of our life. And then cultivate more and more. But other living beings have no sense. Other living beings do not know how to mold, how to prepare for the next life. We can use our human intelligence to prepare for the next life. And this is the most important aspect in our human life. We can see millions of other human beings are suffering and dying and starving. <coughs> millions of human beings are living without a piece of cloth. <coughs> millions of human beings are living without any shelter. And millions of human beings are running here and there as refugees because of the war and volcanic eruptions and earthquake. But we are all right. See how fortunate we are. We never consider it. Visit certain countries and see how some human beings live worse than the stray dogs and cats. They do have some sort of security. Who created those humans to suffer like this? For fun? For what purpose? Nobody.
nobody created. They are own. That's why I told you, we create our own heaven, we create our own hell. Those who have not used their human life, it is difficult for them to be born as real human beings. We cannot blame God or devil for that. We are responsible. In simple language, the Buddha says, we are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Very simple. If we are happy, that means we have done some good deeds, some serv service to others. If we are unhappy, we have done something wrong somewhere to disturb others. And hereafter, after our death, if there is another existence, that life depends on our way of life today. How we think, how we talk, how we do our things, our work. Every day we are going on molding, 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 molding our next existence. It is not suddenly that somebody come and create it. We are creating it. That means we are responsible for our life. There is nobody else to take the responsibility. We can understand this. But other living beings cannot understand. So the meaning of life we can analyze in various ways by analyzing in this way. The Chinese philosopher mentioned says man is good by nature. A later all sort of corruptions and human weaknesses, immoral activities, that is his interpretation. There was another Chinese scholar, I think his name is Sun Tzu, if I am wrong please correct me. He says, at the beginning, man is not good. Man means human. At the beginning, man is not good. That is why education is important. We have to educate them, train them, and then they will become good. Now let us refer to the Buddha. He said, language spoken by the At the initial stage, human mind is pure, luminous. Later, when the faculties Senses started to develop. These senses bring external objects and pollute the purity of the mind. So more and more immoral and wicked and cruel and dangerous things we learn later. 
external influences. Take for instance, if we can separate a baby immediately after birth, bring up in such an atmosphere, environment, without allowing this child to see all the immoral, wicked, cruel, dangerous things. That child does not develop all the bad habits, wicked things, cruel things, dangerous things. Because all these things we learn So the religion is important for us to use as a seed to protect this mind, to avoid, to escape all the evil forces that influence for us to be wicked, be selfish, be cruel, be dangerous. Otherwise, human mind can be twist and turn for any purpose. Man who has no mercy or shame, also Chinese philosophy, Man who has no mercy, no shame, cannot regard as real human beings. Because these two qualities, regarded as humane qualities, if these humane qualities are no more in the man, how can we accommodate them as human? What in the Buddha's advice? He says, before all these religions come into existence, human beings had two governing factors. Govern the whole mankind. Shame and fear. Moral shame and moral fear. Hiri and Motta. Moral shame and moral fear. Not ordinary shame or shyness that you have or fear of this or that this is related to moral or immoral. Through these good qualities, they maintain human dignity. Cultivated humane qualities. The religion come into existence after the development of Humanism. What is humanism? Through their understanding, experience, knowledge, sense of reasoning, they realized so many things for them to uphold as their principles. Then developed. These are the duties towards the wife and husband and children and parents and relatives and friends and the country. Develop in the human mind. Then these are the things which create enormous suffering. These are the things which create present experience according to their experience. Cultivated humanism. Later, 
what they have done. When the concept of God developed in the man's mind, they accommodated God into humanism. Later introduced all these principles were given by the God. Let us take kindness, compassion, sympathy, honesty, patience, tolerance, unity, harmony, understanding. These good qualities have not come down from heaven. We have developed according to our understanding and experience. When they invited God into religion, then it will become religion. Earlier they are not religions. Then they say, God has given. Kindness given by the God. Honesty given by the God. What about those who have no religion? They also have kindness, they also have honesty, they also have sympathy and unity and harmony, who never believe in any religion or any God. They too have human qualities. Not given by God, not given by religions, our own development. This is the uniqueness of the human mind. We do not know how to appreciate and how to value this human mind. We become slaves to so-called supernatural power, supernormal power, miraculous power. When we cannot understand things, we take them as supernatural, miraculous. One day we come to know what these things are. No more supernatural power. Scientists have discovered so many things in this world which we could not understand earlier. What we regarded as miracles. So according to scientific discoveries, there is no such miracles. They are all natural occurrences. When we cannot understand Oh, we say it is miracle. So we should not surrender our intelligence in that. Try to understand. When I was a small boy, every time when rainbow appeared, our parents, do you know what is that? That is the vessels dropped by the God from heaven to take water. <laughs> yes, before they experience the rain after that. All these so-called supernatural powers are like that, our own imaginations. Scientists have discovered all these things. Many more things for them to discover. But only human mind can do that. God has not discovered anything so far. Only human mind. And the concept of God also created by the human mind. It is important. Anatole France, a well-known French scholar, he is a very wise man. He says, if God does not exist, Somehow or the other, we have to create God. Because that concept of God is very important for the human mind. They have fear, they have suspicion, insecurity, feeling. To get rid of these things, uh, that concept of God is important. But those who can understand things properly, that concept is not very 
scientists did not depend on God. Otherwise, they won't be able to discover anything. They use their free mind. The Buddha encouraged us to use free mind, not to depend on Buddha also. He said, don't depend on Buddha to understand what Buddhism is. Think free. But he has paved on the way how to think free. Human life divided into different people systematically. According to Indian philosophy, Artha, Kama, Dharma, Moksha, Hopi. We must work, we must earn, we should not waste our life within our capacity. We must do something, otherwise we cannot satisfy with our life. That is the beginning. Then come to the second stage. Um, enjoy worldly life, sensual. Senses are very eager, very keen to experience worldly pressure. If you arrest them by force, without proper understanding, there will be a lot of disturbances. I am not talking Buddhism. This is the way how they have analyzed worldly life. Experience worldly life. But reasonable way, respectable way, without adapting an immoral or wicked or harmful method, you can enjoy worldly life. Religion also never say it is wrong. And then come to third, dharma. This word gives so many meaning. Here dharma means duties, responsibilities, obligations as human beings. By neglecting your duties and responsibilities, if you try to enjoy your life, then life becomes miserable. It will become a failure. You have to fulfill the words your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your relatives, your friends, your country, the nation, different duties and responsibilities. After fulfilling all these duties, the time has come for you to think of your next existence. Moksha. Your salvation. For that people say have no paradise or whatever words. But real meaning is salvation. What is the meaning of salvation? Because here we are like slaves. Physically and mentally. Whole day and night. We have enormous sufferings and worries and disturbances. Whatever we have, we cannot satisfy. 
Life has become a burden, nuisance. But we have everything. More than enough. No satisfaction. By realizing this, we try to find out whether there is any method for us to get rid of them. To see the end of all these unsatisfactoriness, unhappiness, miserable situation. Now that is the aim. Now let us come back to the Buddha. If we are not ready to renounce, Worldly life. All those religions that appeared in India encouraged people to renounce worldly life, sensual pressure. But in China, they did not encourage. Chinese philosophers say, we should not run away from the society. We must work with the society. By working with them, we gain more experience. We get the chance to cultivate good qualities by associating and working with them but not by running in it. Now see the difference. The Buddha who has renounced the worldly life after gaining his enlightenment how did they preach to advice for those who are not ready to renounce the world life? Today, actually, people have mixed up religious way of life. Certain monks also come and mislead innocent people in their teachings and preachings. Very systematically, the Buddha has introduced his dream. These teachings are for those who have renounced the world life. These teachings are those who are not ready to renounce the world life. So worldly people are trying to follow the monk's way of life. Monks are trying to follow your way of life. Now that is the biggest problem. We have a mix up. Here, yeah. by knowing your problems, your difficulties, what the Buddha says? Arakta samprata, uttan samprata, alyan nitrata samaji Cultivate these four qualities. Let us start with uttan samprata first. The Buddha said, get up. Don't sleep too much. Don't sit down too much. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Don't be lazy. Do something. Do some work. There are certain things that you can do. He encouraged people to work hard. Here you can understand. The Buddha did not preach for everybody, renounce, give up, go back to jungle. <laughs> there is no such teaching in Buddhism. Again he said, Arakka Sambhata. Protect what you have earned. 
without wasting, without neglecting, without the spending for unnecessary things. Protect what we have. Kalyan Nittata. When you associate with people as friends, you must know who those friends are. Otherwise you get into trouble. Friends are the most dangerous people. <laughs> there was a well-known Christian scholar, also in France. His name is Walter. He has a different prayer every day. When he prayed, he said, Oh God, please protect me from my friends. <laughs> protect myself from my enemies. <laughs> right. We get into trouble because of our friend. Here the Buddha's advice is, you must know how to choose real friends. By knowing them, associate with them. Otherwise you get into trouble. Samaji Nidrata. You must know how to balance your income, expenditure. Don't go beyond your income to spend for unnecessary things just to show off. After that, you never get into trouble if you follow this method. See, all these advice is given by the Buddha for you people. Again, he said, you have four kinds of happiness. You must have all these four kinds of happiness. Atthi Sukha, Bhoga Sukha, Anana Sukha, Anavajya Sukha. You must have something for you to think this is my property. This is my bank account. These are my jewelries. This is my house. This is my land. You must have something within your life. So when you come to know that you have something, the happiness that you gain, confidence that you gain is important for your way of life. See, the religious teacher who has renounced everything advised you to do like this. Many people misinterpret Buddhism. That's why many of those Buddhists actually have no bad bones. People come and mislead the teachings of the Buddha. Then he says, Bhoga Sukha. By spending what you have earned, you can enjoy your life. There are people who accumulate, collect property, money, they don't even take proper photos. So stupid. <laughs> enjoy your life. But when you are going to enjoy, please don't forget your basic religious principle. At least five percent. Without violating, without breaking, these five precepts you can enjoy your life. There are duties for you to fulfill by using what you have. Otherwise, you get into trouble. Ananda Sukha. You must know how to adjust your income and expenditure not to borrow from others. If you do that, you will lose your respect, 
under dignity, always under obligations. Try not to borrow from others. This is the advice given by you. Last one is Anavad Jasudra, that is the most important. When we have no guilty concern or guilty feeling in our mind, that guilty feeling disturbs the mind. And they are the ones who are scared to die. Because they know after their death, the life become miserable. Those who have no such guilty feeling in their mind have no such fear of death. At any moment, they are ready to welcome. Because they can die with hopes and confidence. Many others cannot die with hopes and confidence. So we have to cultivate our life, not to regret at the last moment when we are going to die. Oh, I have done this, I have done this, I have this, I have bluffed and fiddled and cheated and this and that. Cannot die. <laughs> Sometimes ago, I received a letter from a Buddhist scholar from Australia, David Morris. He has written to me, to some others also, like this. Reverend Sir, I think you will be very happy to know that I died today. <laughs> he has written the letter and handed it to somebody to post on his death. That is why he has written like this. There are two reasons for you to be happy. First thing, I have been suffering from severe sickness. I am 85 years old. I will be free from that pain after my day. Uh, that is the first reason that we will be happy. Second reason, he became a Buddhist later. Ever since that I accepted Buddhism, I tried my best not to violate the five precepts. I try to uphold the five precepts. If there will be another life hereafter, that life cannot become visible. Uh, that is the second reason that you should be happy. See how they analyze. Uh, we must have that courage to see. I have lived my life in this way. Now I am not scared. I can depart. I can say goodbye to this world without worrying and without fear. Because I know my next existence never becomes miserable. Now that is the real meaning of our life. One and a half hour. What do you think? <laughs> Is there any meaning still to be? better to stop. Eh? <laughs> because I know Singapore people are very busy. <laughs> Not only religion, there are so many other things for them to attend. So we can give few minutes for them to ask any questions.
venerable Yamananda has given a zest to your life, I'm sure there will be a deluge of questions. And I'm wondering whether venerable has the time to answer. So question time, I believe that uh, you all have been given writing materials and there are two um, mics on the floor, so please make use of them. Can we have the first question from members of the floor? Tonight is meaning of life. 
It seems that we don't quite get the answer for that in the end because it seems to be contradiction. What is positive can also be right and wrong. So it's negative can be right and wrong. Now positive in the sense that if we do the right thing, sacrificing our lives, doing things that are noble, we assume that that is correct and that is meaningful life. It is right and honor to us. But on the other hand, we say we owe ourselves. We kill ourselves. So we cannot be right either. Life is given two qualities, one the intellect, the other one the emotion. What we use intellect, we seem to give honor to them. But emotions give the contradictory answers. People will say, life is short, why don't you enjoy life? Don't struggle too hard, you die. You have so much money, you can't bring it to heaven. So, this also is the right answer. So where do you get the right answer? But I'd like to ask you a question with regard to what we see from examples from Buddha's life, Jesus' life, Rama uh, family's life and so on. These are the people who renounce the world. They are slaves to people. And by so doing, they get respect, they get power. So when they die, they go to heaven like Buddha, they still have a meaningful way of life they to serve people. And by so doing, by struggling, and power of one and Buddha, they still got spiritual power to give people and to serve people. Now what do you say of this? So you have given another introduction to my talk. <laughs> but you don't know how to question it. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. You have added me to my talk. There's one uh, mistake I made. Please forgive me. You think the Buddha has gone to heaven after he did. No, it is wrong. <laughs> um, the next question is, how is it in Buddhist countries there is so much poverty, misery, crimes and wars in the present century. Have the general citizens of these countries not followed the five precepts? I don't think that question is correct. There are many more countries who are poorer than Buddhist countries. Christian countries, Muslim countries, Hindu countries, and those who have no religion source. Therefore, we cannot bring religion into this because the situation, the formation of the, the country and the environment, way of life. So, uh, the difficulty of observance of the present, it is true. Although we observe my precepts few times a day, we did once or twice a day, but we break more than ten times a day. Because there are more immoral, more selfish, and more corrupted activities in this world. So when we are going to mix up, associate, work with them, we have no place if we are going to be very religious. We have no place in that society. People regard us either as fools or mad people. If we do not follow they are way of life. Now this is the situation in this world. But amongst all those people, very, very few people have courage to uphold religious principle 
in spite of various problems and criticisms and accusations and disturbances. So it is difficult to be good. It is very easy to be bad. This is the nature of worldly life. And that is why the Buddha says, the more you exist in this world, the more you have to get involved with bad activities, immoral activities, harmful activities. It is very difficult for you to escape, to avoid from them. Therefore, the meaning of life is when we, you get the chance to avoid, keep away and find out the way how to lead a peaceful life without any interference of these activities. Uh, that is the real meaning of life. It's very few people can do this. The whole world is like a battlefield. It's a madhouse. Everybody is selfish. Everybody is cunning. We cannot find a single honest man in this world today. When we address, we say ladies and gentlemen, but when we analyze this world, it is very difficult for us to find out a gentle man. All are gentle, but no gentle man. Now this is the nature of the world today. But if we have courage and knowledge and understanding to uphold at least few noble principles or qualities, it is a great achievement in this corrupted world. Everybody has contributed something to make this a corrupted world. We always blame others, but we never think what sort of thing that we have contributed to make it corrupt. We are also responsible. Thank you. The next question is in the form of a letter. Dear Venerable Sir, may you be blessed with good health. I've always looked forward to the questions and answers section during your talk. Please enlighten me with regard to this. The water that I offered to the Buddha after some time, I noticed some ants were drowned in it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want a method to avoid it? There was a well-known German philosopher. He has written a book also. He says, when we want to keep a glass of honey or a cup of honey, to protect this honey, we take another source and pour water and keep this one. Then the ants cannot go. You can protect the honey. At the same time, he says, we can divert our mind to make it a good kind, same action. What is that? I want to protect this honey not for the sake of honey, but for the sake of that poor ant who dropped into this one. I can save their life. Then it will become a meritorious thing. Same action. The mind can die either this way or that way. 
So in the same manner, so when you offer something to the Buddha, and another layer, also we can also hold that, so that ants can also hold the hand in the future. Um, the next question is, when and what is required for a person to renounce life? Why do monks and nuns have to shave bone? <laughs> For lay people, is it alright to have physical beauty? I think that question might have come from a girl. <laughs> so they are very much concerned about hair. <laughs> first part of the question is when all the suitable time, what are the qualities to renounce the world? It's a very good question. You should not make up your mind to renounce the world without realizing, considering and understanding properly. Because of your emotion, and certain conclusion can create disappointment later. The man suddenly decided to renounce worldly life, gave up even the clothing also, by using a piece of cloth just to cover the nakedness. He went to the jungle sitting under a tree and started to meditate. When he was meditating in the jungle, a rat came and started to cut that piece of blue that he was covering his nakedness. This has become new sense to him. I think what to do now? And he had the idea as a cat at home. He went home and wrote the cat. And now the rat doesn't come. But there is nothing for this cat to eat in the jungle. Cat make noise. This has become innocent. He cannot meditate. Now you're thinking, what to do? There's a cow at home. <laughs> Milk. He brought the cow and the cow and every day he took milk and feed the cat, that, that is fine. But the cow made noise, there was nobody to attend to the whole day and night. <laughs> Three, he cannot meditate. Then he said, best thing is to go and bring my wife. <laughs> so he brought the whole family, whole house, into the jungle. <laughs> uh, because of that sudden conclusion, decision to renounce the world, same thing can happen to you also if you decide to renounce immediately. There are many things you have to consider. Without proper understanding, you should not renounce. For a certain period, yes, you can do that. Few months, for a few years, I want to keep away from all these disturbances and worldly life to have a peace of mind. Well, you can train your mind during that period. So, advantage of this renunciation, it is mentioned like this. Sambhadhoya Naravasu Household life worldly life. We can find a lot of disturbances, obstructions, hindrances. Yes. No one is free from them. Rajas Ayata. All the dirty, immoral, wicked, dangerous things come from this worldly material. Abhuka so papad. 
one who has renounced the worldly life is like a bird in the sky. These birds can fly like this way or that way, and the birds never carry anything. Suitcase, toothbrush, <laughs> vitamin pills, nothing. Passport, ID <laughs> card, free from everything. They migrate from country to country, these birds, never carry anything. No burden. Renunciation is just like that bird's way of life. Free from all the worldly obligations, responsibilities and disturbances. Then the mind gets the chance to calm, to develop, to gain more knowledge and wisdom and purity. And later this method, this renunciation become the cause for us to find out the meaning of life. What is the meaning of life? Our final salvation. The next question is, can I combine religions like Christianity, Buddhism, Islam into one belief? What is good? What is bad? Please explain as I am three in one. <laughs> You are all the four <laughs> Not necessary to use either Buddhism or Christianity or Islam or Hinduism. These are labels. Use the word only religion. Then you will be free from grudge, discrimination, hostility, and so many problems. Cultivate all the good qualities. All these existing religions have borrowed the good qualities from the humanism that we have cultivated at the beginning. Not created by their particular religion. Not given by God. Not given by the Buddha. Buddha did not create any of these good qualities. He said, I am going to preach the dharma that existed earlier. It is not a new dharma. It is not a dharma or religion created by the Buddha. So dharma or the truth of kindness and honesty and good qualities are not belong to any particular religion. They are not the properties of any of these religions. Because those who have no religions also uphold, respect these good qualities. They also live as gentlemen, noble human beings, without depending on any religious labor. Today people are fighting because of these religious labels. Labels are not important. Try to cultivate good principle, good qualities, without depending on any religious labor. if one is contented. If, if I believe one will be left, sorry, I think this question is, uh, if, if we believe that we are contented, we will be left behind. Do you agree? No. <laughs> Just now I mentioned, when the mind is contented, that mind will be free from jealousy. Jealousy never appears when we are contented. We allow others also to earn and work and enjoy. That is the first thing. 
If there is no jealousy, no anger. Anger comes because of that jealousy. So we will be free from that anger if we are contented. If there is no anger, we never create violence or bloodshed or disturbances. We will be free from all these bad, evil, wicked thoughts if the contentment is there. So that is why the Buddha says, Santuti Paramam Nana. The highest wealth in this world is the contentment. This is enough for me. So simple, yet very big. Um, the next question is, isn't our mental will our weapon? With it, we learn to fight with our hands and religion. Am I right? Use religion also to fight. <laughs> I have mentioned, we have extraordinary intelligence, but disturbed, eclipsed, and deluded, misled, blindfolded. Therefore, many people cannot use their intelligence. Religion is important to remove all these dark clouds from the mind. Not to use the religion and get into battlefield. Otherwise, no use of having the religion. Mind is clouded, deluded, misled. Through religion, you can cleanse all these dust and dark clouds from the mind. And the mind becomes clear. Then clear vision, can see things properly, can understand things properly, when these dark clouds are no more around the mind. The next question is, is the eating of garlic and onions and the eating of eggs that are unfertilized Sorry, I think this question is not correctly phrased. Is the eating of eggs that are unutilized and, and um, is it alright to eat eggs that are unutilized as well as garlic and onions? Eating of garlic and onion. I spent nearly five years in Benares in the university. There were 10,000 students. It is strictly prohibited for those students to eat garlic and onion. This is an Indian tradition. Later, the religions existed in India accepted this, but the Buddha did not accept. He never uttered even one word about this. But some others copied the Indian belief. So, medicinal relics in garlic and onion, when you discuss with those who really study, you can see these two things can cure so many sicknesses. Thousands of years ago, they have discovered garlic, ginger, pepper, and onion. Medicinal relics. So, Religion should not interfere with this thing. 
and on the other hand, there is no life. But if, if the conception has taken place in the head, it is not advisable to destroy it. Life is there. If there is no life, if conception has not taken place, no harm at all. That is the simple answer. Next question. Did Buddha believe in the existence of God? When I was in Australia last year, I gave a talk. An Australian lady asked this question. What is the Buddha's attitude towards God? Then I told her, the Buddha has never said in his teaching that there is no God. He never uttered this. His advice is, whether the God exists or not, you should not forget your duties and responsibilities. The parable is there. Now you believe in God for your protection. Pray. Very good. There is nobody who can say you are wrong. You are bad. You depend on God for everything. But don't forget to lock the door when you go out at night time. <laughs> there is no guarantee that God will protect your house until you come back. Uh, that is the Buddha's attitude toward God. Of water on the top of the hill, not the beginning of the hill. Uh, 
and then they found out the sunlight, sun rays, evaporate water from here and mix up the cloud and again drop. Then some others asked, how is water originated? Then analysis, oxygen and hydrogen. Did <laughs> <laughs> you find that the origin of the river? Uh, that is why the Buddha says infinite. Goes round and round and round. End become the beginning, beginning become the end. There is no beginning. Various other factors, sources, energies contribute and changing, 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 changing. It is true. Anamata Bhoyam Vikhaya Sansaro Upa Gautina Panjayati. It is impossible to find out the beginning of the universe or the world or the life. But here what we mention, when the formation has taken place, those two devas who have come down from another planet who existed earlier, settled down here. Uh, Buddhism teaches in this way. But other religions say God created them at once. Here on this earth. Uh, that is the difference. Venerable Sir, if we work hard and have the chance to enjoy worldly things, craving arises. So how are we supposed to balance the desire for enjoyment and the need to cut down our craving? Practice containment. <laughs> In Buddha's time, science was not as advanced as today, but people seem to be enlightened by Buddha's teachings faster. Nowadays, science is more advanced, but people seem not to be able to grasp exactly Buddha's teachings now. What has exactly happened to the human race? I don't think you are right. Vidya Charana Sampanna Among those nine virtues of the Buddha one particular quality is for the virtues is Vidya and Charana Here Vidya means science Charana means conduct That scientific knowledge and conduct both we can find equally in the Buddhas. Nobody else in this world who had both equally. Buddha is called Vidya Charana because of it. He mentioned this on many occasions. So far I have revealed only this much what I understood, which is important for you to get rid of your suffering. Yes. He has collected this point of sand from the Ganges river bay. See the amount of sand that I have in my hand, the amount of sea, sand along the the Dhamma, the truth that I have revealed so far only this one, but unrevealed Dhamma is just like the sand all along the canvas. But they are not very important for you to get rid of your worldly suffering. Your scientific knowledge never support you to get rid of your worldly suffering. Your scientific knowledge never helped you to become honest or kind or understanding people. 
you become more crooked, more cunning, more dangerous, more selfish because of your scientific knowledge. Before we learn this science, we were ordinary devils. After learning this science, we have some clever devils. <laughs> we made the time bomb, atom bomb, this bomb, that bomb, besides scientific knowledge. Now this is the advantage of science. That is what the Buddha said. I have to really tell you how to make missile, how to make atom bomb, how to make machine gun. I thought to, by knowing you are unhappy, you are suffering, you are miserable, pave the way for you to get rid of this suffering. But science was advanced, but not real, not important. But those who have discovered atom at the beginning, they thought they can use for constructive purpose. What happened in the end? Use for the destructive purpose just now I told you, within half an hour can turn the whole world into ashes. Now that is the scientific purpose. But scientists have discovered so many things for us to understand, to get rid of our imaginations and misconceptions about the world and the universe. For that we are very grateful. But that knowledge is not important for us to get rid of our worldly sufferings. Is the time now? We have plenty of time, Reverend. <laughs> of course. There is no limit in time. It's a nice rubber time. Okay. Um, dear sir, please teach us how to handle rumors and how to get along with people who like to gossip. I think that question is gossiping and spreading rumors, criticizing and accusing and blaming others are very common human attitude. In the Buddha's teaching also it is mentioned. Nathi loke anindito. No one is free from <coughs> blame, accusation, <coughs> criticism, whether they are good or bad. The Buddha was very good. Jesus was very good. Mahatma Gandhi was very good. Socrates was very good. Abraham Lincoln was very good. Martin Luther King was very good. They tried to do wonderful service to mankind. How many criticism, accusations, blades and enemies and tried, in the end they tried to kill him, they killed many of them. Uh, this is the nature of the world. So we should not disturb ourselves, create enmity or anger in our mind when others criticize or blame or accuse. We must strengthen our mind to face them. One day, somebody is called the Buddha's disciples by using dirty and vulgar and wicked words. Calling and scolding and scolding but no reactions or emotional feeling. He was sitting like a statue. He was very angry and shouted. Did you hear what I told you just now? And then the disciple, what did you say? <laughs> you didn't hear that I scolded you. Did you hear and scold me? I did hear. Because he was concentrating on something else. So we have to train the mind not to pay too much of attention to scolding. When somebody comes and starts to scold you, you close your eyes and concentrate and practice inhaling, exhaling, meditation. One to, one to ten, one to ten, one to ten. You cannot hear anything 
buat bisnis.